Well, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to Doc NYC Spring Showcase, and we are going to talk about uh, the nonfiction series Dear. Thank you so much to our friends at Apple Plus for sharing uh, this beautiful, inspiring series uh, with us today. Uh, we have Jenna Rosher, Jane Shaw Cutler, and Donnie J from the crew and the filmmaking team. So I will just go by the order I see them and have them quickly introduce themselves. Um, Jenna. Hi, I'm Jenna Rosher. I'm a director and I'm a cinematographer on, on Dear Season 2, which I had the great pleasure of doing. We and thank you so much for sharing it with us. It's uh, and we'll talk more about it, but it's been so inspiring. Jane. Hi, I am Jane Chaw Cutler. I am an executive producer of Deer. Donnie. Hi, I'm Donnie Jackson. I'm one of the executive producers, and in that role, I'm the showrunner. Perfect. And congratulations. It's, uh, you know, I'm so happy we all can like get together and watch this. Um, thank you so much. I mean, just to be very clear, I was crying through it, like especially the Sandra O oh episode. I was like, OK, this is embarrassing. I'm so happy I'm watching it by myself. Um, so if we can just go back to the very beginning, how did it start? Who had this idea and who told whom? I think Jane has the best uh, history here. Uh, yeah, well, it's it's funny. The the casting of Deer is a very um, it's a very it's it's more of an art than a science, and it's not always like the biggest celebrity or the you know the the one with the most social media followers or any any metric like that. It's really about impact and about people that we think have really um, touched people's lives and. Sandra definitely fit the bill on that. And, you know, we had a preliminary phone conversation, uh, Donnie and I, with her as she was, she was driving in some backwoods. She was, she had just finished a project and she was on her way to a vacation and had like, you know, like a little bit of spotty reception and we were talking to her. But even on that phone conversation, she was so invested and so open and so charismatic, so all in. And we just, we talked about everything from her, um, her Golden Globe speech with her parents in the audience to her immigration story, to believing in herself, like just to restaurant recommendations in Pittsburgh. Like it was just a really incredible conversation. So we knew that her episode was going to be um, beautiful. Um, Jenna, uh, how, how do you go about, like, you know, when you think about, and I, and I know that Jane touched a little bit on it, that there is no specific metric to who gets to be on this show. So how do you, like, what is your brief? And you're like, okay, I need a person who does this, 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 or who means this, this, this. Well, fortunately for me, a, a lot of those decisions have been made by Donnie and Jane by the time they reach me <laughs> in terms of the decision-making. So I kind of right away, uh, when I find out which episode I'm going to work on, I, and I worked on, I had the chance to work on multiple ones. I kind of really take a deep dive into this, into this person's life. You know, you, you think you know any of these icons, but you, you kind of don't when you take that deep dive. So mm -hmm. that's kind of the first part. But then equal of equal importance is getting to know these letter writers and their stories. And so having discussions with them on the phone ahead of time will often take place. And, you know, I wanna not just learn about what drew them to this individual, but I wanna learn about their lives. So. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it sort of happens in equal parts and just getting invested in these, in these folks ahead of time. So when it comes time to film, you know, we really kind of have a sense of, of the story we want to tell and how we want it to look and, and feel. So. Donnie, Jane, um, could you go a little deeper into how you go about having these people on the show? One of the things that's important to us is having diversity. So for every person we pick, we're also looking for somebody who's not like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Somebody who's had a different type of impact because impact can be described or defined in, in lots of different ways, whether it be, you know, uh, a very personal uh, connection that they've had with some someone or like, uh, you know, Sandra Oh has had a much larger impact uh, with, with her speech and with her, uh, you know, way of living, uh, including what she did in, in Pittsburgh while she was there. Uh, protesting, just kind of showing up spontaneously. Um, so diversity is important because part of what we're trying to impart is that 
everybody can change the world. And we're looking at how these these uh, very well-known people have changed the world, but how they've also inspired these letter writers who are in their small way or large way changing the world as well. Jane, yeah, Sandra, to, oh yeah, sorry, yeah, oh, go yeah. ahead. Sandra was actually our first Asian American in the series. Um, and so that was very special. And then we also loved that one of her letter writers was Bowen Yang, who of course his star has just exploded. And the fact that he was influenced by Sandra to become you know, this incredibly accomplished person in his own right, and in turn will inspire, we're sure, you know, the next generation of performers and artists was just to see that kind of chain of influence was really exciting to us. And how do you choose the letter writers? It's, it's so fascinating, like, you know, just hearing you guys talk about the process. There is a we're, big we're, team. <laughs> yeah, Donnie, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I was going to say uh, those exact words. We have a great uh, team of detectives who who comb social media. They they look at articles that have been posted. They look at just the, the smallest mention that somebody might have uh, been uh, uh, an admirer. They may have already written a letter that uh, has gotten to that particular uh, celebrity or icon. Um, but and, and it may be through word of mouth. Hey, I know somebody who's a big fan, or or whose life was changed dramatically uh, by by Sandra Oh, and uh, or you know Laird Hamilton, and uh, these these uh, curators, these uh, letter writer producers, have the most amazing instincts for who is going to be uh, you know a compelling storyteller because it's not enough just to be a fan because uh, there's certainly plenty of people who are our fans, but uh, you know are able to be eloquent in basically articulating how someone has uh, had a, a profound impact on them and then how they have tried to share that impact with other people. Yeah, um, Jenna, I also wanted to uh, speak to you a little bit about the aesthetics. You know, I, I was very intrigued as to what each of their backgrounds are. It's very minimalistic, but also there's so much thought into why is Viola Davis sitting with a bookcase, a huge bookcase behind her, or like why Sandra was sitting in this theater. So if you can just like talk a little bit about that. Yeah, especially, well, first with the icons, it's, it's something that takes a lot of consideration. You know, what is the setting that makes the most sense for this individual? Um, in the case of Laird Hamilton, he was literally on his own balcony. <laughs> in his home in Kauai with the back, with literally the view that he wakes up to every day. It um, almost looks like green screen. It's so it pretty. It totally <laughs> does. And I'm here to say that it is not green screen. It <laughs> for hours to make that interior balance with that exterior. Um, it truly is that backdrop. It, it's kind of crazy. I mean, we sat, Donnie and I were there together and we literally had to pinch ourselves saying, is this really happening? Because we were in a, in Kauai, it rains like every 15 minutes. So How's that going to happen? And we have the window, COVID, it's like a whole thing. Yeah. Um, that was just a blessing that day. It was just truly, we were, it was a gift. Um, so really it's a consideration about what space um, makes the most sense for our icons. We work really closely with an amazing team. I mean, the crew is incredible on these shows and I work with art director and a gaffer and to really figure out what is the, you know, what is really the, the energy and the, the, just the design and the aesthetic of this person's personality and their story that they're telling. And then likewise with the letter writers, you know, we're off or we're going to their hometown. So it's embracing their homes, their neighborhoods. Um, and so it's, it's, it's a lot of time and consideration, but I'm uh, being a documentary filmmaker. I, I'm all about the real. So that's often kind of, you know, the first approach is let's go with what is, truly this person's life and that's mm -hmm. what you know that's that's kind of the direction we take yeah and by the way can, yeah go ahead oh what i was going to say one of the things that's not uh as, as clear is that there's a river in laird hamilton's backyard he literally walks out of his garage and he's in this this winding river that he can just paddleboard uh you know straight from his uh, his pathway and so all that stuff that you see is uh is his backyard and it's it's pretty jaw-dropping uh, but it was also appropriate for a guy whose who's, uh, claim to fame is nature. And uh, mm -hmm. so we were really lucky to have such a, such a view. And, you know, I know I'm going very back and forth in this, and mm -hmm. it's not a linear conversation, but I was also intrigued as to, like, 
and I whoever feels comfortable answering this can go like why letters like you know it's it's also such a I mean not for me I, I'm like the older lot I, I still used to write letters but like letters you know it, we've had shows where icons meet their quote-unquote fans like you know and it's like oh my god and they'll like sign something or you know but this is a very different format you know why and you know it gives us the space to when it's a letter you know it gives us yeah this, yeah I think, I mean, I think to, to your point, it takes a lot of effort to write a letter. And this is different than, you know, just sending off a text message or, yeah. you know, posting something on social media. When you sit down, you get out a pen and paper and you hand write a letter, that requires a lot of thought, a lot of deliberate effort. And that it was the whole show was actually inspired by an Apple ad campaign of letter writers who had been so moved by their Apple watches that they wrote letters to Apple. And they were like, well, you know, can we take the kernel of that and, you know, just take the inspiration of impact and make it into something bigger and broader. And that's, we ran with that. Mm -hmm. So I think that that is at the heart of it. It, it. This is not like a quick turn thing. It is about a deep, a deep impact of both the icon on the letter writer and then the letter writer giving their gratitude back to the icon. Yeah, yeah and it and all shines it's true. too beautifully. Yeah, mm -hmm. Donnie. And I think there's something to be said for the analog of it. There's so much uh, digital in our lives. There's something about the, the non-digital, the, the analog, the, the, the hard copy of something that really frames emotion differently than, a, than as Jane said, a, a text or a tweet or, or a post. So you, uh, you can feel it in your hand, it has weight, it moves. So you can look at it in, in three dimensions. And there's something about the emotion that we're trying to capture that I think is really uh, uh, bolstered by that, that analog treatment. Yeah, and I think it also gives somewhat of a gravity to, you know, what we understand as fan culture. Like, this is so much more than that. Like, you know, it's not just like someone, you know, shouting outside your window. It's it's not someone who's thronging you at a public uh, appearance, but it's like someone's life you've touched deeply. So Jenna, would you, like, you know, what has that been like to, and, you know, of course you said that you were filming them so you've had a very close interaction with them so to see the actual impact this icon has made on this person's life how, how what's that been like um well you know i was going to add that the letter is like its own character in the story yeah. really and when we're filming it really has to be you know it takes we want to give time to featuring this letter and the, the way we graphically incorporate the letter in the show is so cool too in these backdrops mm -hmm backgrounds. Um, so I really love that presence on an aesthetic level, but on a deeply personal, intimate level between the icon and these individual people. Um, I will say just one of the, the moment I often loved was watching these icons read these letters to see how they were going to react to what people are, are you know, what are saying, what are saying, saying to them in terms of like how they've shaped their life and how they've impacted their life, but also just them sharing their own lives. And I think for a lot of people in that position, it's a, you know, there's always a lot of focus on them. And I think what's beautiful about this series is that it allows them to focus on someone else mm -hmm. and to not just hear how they've impacted another person, but to also just hear about someone else's life it takes the pressure off of them for a minute. You know, it's always on them. Mm. And so an example for me was I'll always call upon Laird because <clears throat> I had the great fortune of working on a film with Laird years ago and Laird was in a whole different space. And when we arrived in Kauai to film Deer, Laird was a very vulnerable, in a kind of a very vulnerable, kind of warm and cozy state of mind. You know, he was talking a lot about his marriage, which he was so, you know, had such gratitude for in his kids. And so then once, the letters came at the end. He was just, he was just, he was so, he was so, I think, affected in a way that I was found very unexpected because he was crying literally at some of, you know, at almost all of them in reaction. And so, um, you know, I, I again want to add just that, that we don't, no one writes letters anymore. And so for, for to take that sort of, you know, 
communication in such an intimate way, mm-hmm. handwritten on a piece of paper, to giving it to someone and saying to them, like, you changed my life. You inspired me in ways that I can't even express. And it's, it's really extraordinary, I have to say. Um, uh, I had also filmed with Ava DuVernay, who was also very deeply affected by the letters she was reading. So um, you get to see another side of them too, which is really very, very cool. Yeah, and then, you know, another thing, my, one of my favorite things about the whole series that the episodes tell you so much, but they're also very crisp. At no point are you like, oh my God, this has been going on for a minute too long. And I think that's to all your credit. It's it's so wonderful. And you're also like, you know, by the end of 30 minutes, we've seen the life stories of six people, seven people, like, you know, the letter writers and yeah. the icon, and they're talking about people they knew in high school, their sisters, you know, it's it's fascinating how how crisp it is, given how much matter you're dealing with. So and maybe each one of you can talk to that, that, you know, how do you know that this is what we, this is the kernel of the story. This is what we keep. And of course, I'm sure like, you know, I've worked in documentaries myself, like, you know, there's so much happening at the edit, editing table. So what are the questions that guide, or, I mean, what are the uh, questions and what are the decisions that guide your editing process? Well, you know, shout out to our, our post team. We have uh, an extraordinary set of, of professionals, uh, story producers and a co-EP that I've worked with on a couple of other shows um, who really have a sense of what the, what the essence of a thing is. And I think that's what you're talking uh, about. And, and thank you for that, for that note, because uh, no one's mentioned that before in terms of the brevity of it, but still it's kind of saturated with feeling uh, and meaning. And it's important to have professionals who are not just looking at sensation. They are looking at things that, that have, uh, you know, deep, profound uh, meaning in addition to the facts and figures that, you know, you want to, to you know, follow the arc of someone's uh, life. And so having, having that kind of team with the sensibility to look at what is important, not, is not just what's flashy, not, is, uh, not just what's a, 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 an incident, but something that has a real um, arc to it and and these uh, these these folks are great and so that's that's important to to the show having people that that know how to tell a story with real people and carve away all the things that are not really really meaningful and about uh, an impactful soulful life i think a lot of times the story ends up coming back to things that like taking up space or being seen or pushing yourself to, you know, do something that you, you don't think you could have done. Like a lot of the, a lot of these themes, whether it's with Sandra or Billy Porter or Andre Leontali in one of his last interviews, like all of these stories, many times they come back to those central themes, um, both because of the icon's own histories and lives and how they ended up where they are and the letter writers and their lives and why they were so moved to write to the icons because they feel seen by that those, those people. So I think like that common thread really helps tie the series together. Yeah, Jane brings up a really great example because with Sandra, one of the things that was true about her is that her parents weren't that excited about her being an actor. And so to, for her to have you know, reached the level that she, she has is extraordinary. But for, for someone like, like a, a, a Bo and Yang, who you know, his parents wanted him to, to be a physician, um, <laughs> to end up where he ended up. Uh, uh, and and you know, with, with, the, with the blessing of, of his family uh, is, a, is a lovely parallel. And it kind of shows you that ultimately, whether you're famous or whether you're uh, not well known, there are certain core human things that we're all going through. And I think this show in particular is, is framing, you know, those similarities. Jenna, would you like to um, talk about how you collaborate with the editorial team? Yeah, well, no, I, what I, I just want to speak to, just add to it. I think what's creatively and structurally when you're, you know, laying out a show and, you know, it all starts in the field, you know, I think that it's, it's, these themes these, that, that sh- are shared between the icon and the, the letter writer 
it's, I love how the biographical structure of their story, each part is a launching pad. It really is a thematic launching pad into someone's story. So there's, there's all these just sort of um, innate kind of tie-ins, things that are just sort of there. And when we're shooting it, it, it starts to make sense because when I, when I hear the icon tell their story, I know exactly almost where, oh, this letter writer we filmed, where their story is going to fit in, in terms of Laird's you know, journey or Sanders' journey or Ava's journey. So um, I really, I, the structure of it is really nice because I think it's also what you said about, you know, it's crisp and it kind of keeps going and it's that you're not, it's not this long, just solely a biography, although that would be great. It's, it's you're getting to hear from other people and you're getting to really hone in on the things that they, that they share, you know, as humans, so. Yeah, and I especially, have, oh, go ahead, yeah. Oh, no, I just have to say, I think that the, um, because of the intimacy of this project, you kind of end up falling in love with all of these icons a little bit. And then I find myself, you know, just in real life, just following their life developments, like, you know, it, when Billy directs his first movie or Malala gets married or, you know, Viola gets nominated for an Oscar. I'm like, go, you know, that's awesome. <laughs> like you like cheer them on, like, the, you know, they're your best friends because, you know, you feel very kind of close to them after going through this process. <clears throat> it's kind of fun. Yeah, and you know, <laughs> and it's, it's such a, and it's, it's, it is a repetitive format because every episode has this one set format and it's it's so commendable that you guys do it in a way that does not feel tedious. Like, you know, I love the last scene where everybody says, with love, dance, sincerely, yeah. without you. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> you know, I was, and it's such a nice format, which is like, it could be so sentimental. You know, it, it, like, mm. you know, it could be one of those like, oh my God, I can't take this. This is too sweet, <laughs> you know? So I really, uh, that's something I really enjoyed about the whole series and kudos to you and your team. Um, Jane, I'm so glad you brought up uh, Andre Leontelli and, you know, I was uh, seeing his brilliance and it's a kind of feeling that, you know, damn, we lost him, you know? So how does, and I know there's no way knowing when you go into this but you know you're also creating this archive of these fantastic people so you know what do you feel about that and like you know everyone can take uh, turns so uh, i'm sure yeah i mean he had just come out with with his memoir which um gave a sense of his history and his story but to hear him tell it in his own words and then to see how so many of the next generation of not just fashion people, but you know what, just young people were inspired by his pioneering and kind of, he didn't have the easiest road and he had to overcome a lot to get to where he was. And there were a lot of things that we learned about him of the impact he had without telling anybody about it and without anybody really knowing about it until, um, yeah, he, they kind of came out of the woodwork to get, pay tribute to him. Um, it, so I think that was all part of a really, you know, a fitting, a fit, one of his final interviews, like a very fitting um, tribute to Andre. And we had the good fortune to meet him, you know, many years ago um, during the September issue process. And, and he was so warm and charming and, um, yeah, it's it's a huge loss to all of us. And Donnie spent, well, did the interview, yeah. Yeah, you know, Andre has a special place in my heart, as as they all do, but in, in a different way because his Andre can be, you know, he could be very complicated. He could be very difficult um, uh, because excellence was such a an, an important watchword for him. Um, but he was unlike anybody else we we sat with uh, during the season he really threw himself into reading those letters as as the character that he interpreted the, the letter writer to be he was so passionate about it and uh, he finished reading all the letters and and said can I take these with me you know he, he really wanted to just have them as, as, as keepsakes and uh, even, even though our our you know our initial relationship started off rocky because he was just so you know uh, Andre you know just this imperious larger than life figure but ultimately it's because he wanted to get it right he didn't want to 
he didn't want to mess up. And so the thing that we, you know, that's not public information, but which I'll share with you now is that we finished the interview. And the first thing he said was, did I do okay? And that's not a question you think Andre Leon Talley would ever have to ask for one thing, I let alone ask. And then he took me to Harlem for takeout soul food. In his limo, <laughs> so it, uh, I have I have the sweetest memories of of Andre, and uh, and uh, as we understand, it was one of his last interviews, and so I'm glad that he got a chance to share himself with us, and and now because of the show with the world. Yeah. By the way, they all ask right. that. Oh, they all ask that. They all after at the end of the interview, you're like, uh, are you okay? <laughs> yes, you are okay. You're Jane Fonda. Were we okay? Right. That's yeah. like, let's reverse that question yes you're always okay <laughs> yeah it's almost <laughs> like was I okay like you exactly. guys should understand like were we okay <laughs> no and like, exactly. it's so it's so touching that you know this is his last interview and he knew how much people loved him and I'm so of course he knew how much people loved him but like you said to have that tangible piece of paper in front of you that's that it's it is life altering even for stars um, I know we have to wrap up. So if one of each, each one of you can, and I, and I hate this, and I people have told me they hate this equally, but I have to <laughs> ask. Uh, 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 not you know, I'm not going to ask you to pick your favorites. Um, I, I mean, okay, I'm not that cruel. Uh, but uh, <laughs> what what would you say was your biggest learning from all of this? What's your biggest takeaway um, from making Dior? Wow. Donnie, do you want to go first? Sure, sure, I'm happy to. Um, I, I think, I mean, we've hinted at it, all of us, that anyway, for, for me, the greatest takeaway is that it reminds us, this show reminds us of how connected we are, how alike we are emotionally. Whether, you know, someone's a, a, you know, a fashion editor or an actor uh, or, or a director, ultimately, when they're talking about uh, loss or ambition or joy, we can relate to that. And I think the more specific you are in storytelling as they've been, as the letter writers are, uh, the more universal these things become. And so for me, that that's my favorite thing about this show. It's my favorite thing about any of the interviews or any of the letter writers that we work with, because whatever they've done, they're connecting to something that we can all relate to. Um. I mean, I always go back to one of the stories that Oprah told in season one of Dear when she's talking about legacy. And she's like, you know, I was very upset. Something was happening with my girls' school and I was just going on and on about it. And Maya Angelou was like, nope, you don't know what your legacy is going to be. And she was like, no, 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 you don't understand. This school is my legacy. It's the most important thing. No, no, no. You do not know what your legacy will be. And I always go back to that because you know, even, I mean, Oprah's on a whole other level, but I feel like that's true of all of us, of everybody, of certainly of everybody in the series and everybody just in general, none of us do know what our legacy is going to be. It's like, we may, we may impact somebody that we never even knew about. And I think that's kind of just a beautiful way of looking at going through life. Well said. Very well said. Jenna. I think what I love about the show is kind of what I call shared sort of vulnerability. You know, um, I feel like you, I think we all long, we, we strive to be vulnerable. We fight to be vulnerable. We long, you know, I, and I think what you're seeing on both sides, you're seeing letter writers literally pouring out their, their hearts to these icons in such a, beautifully eloquent way. You're also watching these icons kind of really not just walk you through the, the hardest times of their lives, the most, you know, joyous parts of their lives, but also taking in the stories from people who they've impacted. And, and so for me, I, you know, I strive to find the vulnerable in storytelling. And I think this show does a remarkable job of showing a side of people you don't really get to see. You don't get to see it all the time. And even these amazing icons, they're, you know, doing a news story or they're, they're a director like Ava DuVernay. I'm always seeing a real tough Ava, someone who's like, you know, leading the charge and directing and making stories, but I, I've never seen her cry. <laughs> and so that to me has always been like the real takeaway for me on Dear. 
And thank you so much for like joining me in this conversation today, because these are sides of the story we don't get to see. And I'm so happy for this uh, little chat that we had. And thank you again for sharing Dear with us and everyone who's watching, I'm sure loved it. Go tell your friends to watch it as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.